Welcome to Access to Perspectives Conversations, the podcast for bridging academic landscapes. At Access to Perspectives, we provide novel insights into the communication and management of research. Our goal is to equip researchers around the world with the skills and enthusiasm they need to pursue a successful career. You will get insights around the topics of scholarly reading, writing and publishing, career development, project management and research integrity, all embedded into open science practices. Learn more about our work at accesstoperspectives.org. Welcome back, guys, um, listeners. I'm very happy today to be able to introduce you to my dear colleague, Rania Bahila, with the full name being Rania Mohammed Hassan Balila. Um, uh, we, we can call you Rania, right? Like the yeah. yeah, sure. sure. And we've known each other since is it 2018. We've met in I think so, yes. Cape Town, Cape Town. the Spark Africa yes. event. And yeah. And then I learned about your quite exciting research. So, and yeah, so you, okay, to to leak a little bit of information, a sneak preview. So you're doing research on poisonous animals, snakes and scorpions. And then like, I I mean, of course, like I love any, I love all the animals. I'm a biologist by training. I'm a big fan of biodiversity and evolution. So it's not that I'm scared. I think if I meet one in person or in 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 like in the, like out there, you know, I'd be scared and respectful. <laughs> but how okay, first of all, warm welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having how me today. I decided to do your research on poisonous animals like that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um this journey started in 2018 when we met, actually. Uh, it was about children uh, getting its tongue by scorpions, venomous scorpions, uh, in the northern part of the country, of my country. I'm, I'm, I come from Sudan. Mm. Sudan is an African country, and we have 17 uh, different species, uh, scorpion species, and more than 30 snakes. So children were dying in that year, uh, 65 child has died. Mm -hmm. And I am a biologist as well, I'm a zoologist. And I was thinking I should work, do something using my knowledge, using my expertise as a molecular biologist, as a biologist whose concern uh, revolves around public health challenges. Mm -hmm. So I made a call in social media calling all Sudanese scientists to come forward if they wish to think, because research on venomous organisms such as snakes and scorpions had actually been on hold since colonial time. Huh. Uh, for, yeah, very long time indeed. Uh, scorpions, I mean, the, 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 public, the, the publication we found for scorpions dated back to 1955 and for snakes dated back to 1937. Mm -hmm. So people came forward and I had to lead the effort because I am the one who's calling people to do this. Uh, we formulated a research group and then we wrote a proposal to make it a research, a full research center uh, affiliated with the University of Khartoum, the oldest university in the country. And we managed to do that. During all that time, I was self-teaching on mm. snake handling, scorpions collecting, uh, reading, and learning about biology because my training was on microscopic organisms. I used to work with like malaria, precise, leishmania, but precise. The health-oriented research was out of a passion for human health. Well, obviously, exactly. Yeah. Explaining. yeah, and I'm and then you're just... and I'm passionate about each as well, and it fulfilled both actually. Yeah, well, that makes sense. So, research on venomous animals is also to protect the animals, exactly. Yeah. Both of them mm -hmm. humans and animals. That makes sense. That's both. totally down my alley. We share the same sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> Because many, like when it comes to health, many research, much research also goes around, how can we get rid of mosquitoes altogether? 
ignoring that they're an important part of the ecosystem. And yes, exactly. I mean, there's spread malaria, but the mosquito is not the issue, issue, the plasmodium. But even though plasmodium has a purpose in this, plan in this planet, so how can we exactly. balance so that humans can protect themselves without us having to kill all the mosquitoes? And wow. this is the concept we're working mm -hmm. around, actually. This is the concept uh, around which we found the Toxic Organisms Research Center to wow. conserve the animals and at the same time uh, mitigate what's happening, try to teach people uh, how to avoid getting bitten or stung by skin yeah. and scorpions. Because the problem is people have moved to these creatures or these animals uh, habitats. It's not the the other way around. Right. Yeah. So we need. You know, we tend to forget that. But, yeah. We've encroached their habitat, and now they are just trying to kind of find a place to live. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we started doing this, going to areas affected areas, uh, educating the people, raising awareness, educate, and and then we found lots of gaps. You know, it's not just about the research. It's not just about the scientific research. Mm. We found that medical doctors uh, all over the country did not get trained mm. on how to manage snake bites, envenomation, or scorpion stings. Oh. Some of them been denied the presence of these organisms in the country. So we had to like start from roots up. We mm. tried to reach every single policymaker from the interior department with those from the Ministry of Health whether federal or state at the state levels. Mm. Uh, we tried to talk to people from the, the fund, the medical uh, fund uh, in the Caribbean because it's their responsibility to re bring in and to register venoms. And mm -hmm. sadly, we recognize when we work, when we are surveying uh, the villages that the anti-venom that's used in Sudan is not functioning ah. because it was manufactured for, yeah. Exactly. It's a single antivenom registered for scorpion stings and another one for uh, snake bites. And, and both of them are not as good as they should be. They're not specific to this particular species? No. Oh. No. Can None ask, of them. Like, how much, so, yeah. like is, isn't there traditional knowledge in handling poisonous animals and living side by side? Or is it a, a new occurrence because people have encroached the habitat just recently, relatively speaking? Uh, I, because... it, you can see both of these happening, actually. Mm. So we have people who have this traditional knowledge. And at, in these places where you have these people who know how to, de to deal with these organisms, snake bites and scorpion stings uh, incidence is low, lower than where you... Where, lower than other places yeah, so really if you go for island. example yeah yeah. Mm. yeah so if you go to to places like blue nile estates uh their forest estates, people know snakes mm -hmm. better than people in the northern part of the country mm -hmm. so if you go to their forest estates and blue nile estates uh you won't find the information rate as high as what you see in the northern part of the country yeah. in addition to that maybe maybe there is a um, I mean, the recording of the cases might be affected by the ongoing war. This is the war that's going on there since 2003 in that whole region. I'm not quite sure. I mean, an aligned number of uh, cases aligned with the number of snakes we can see in that region, the venomous ones, or of medical importance ones. Uh, if you go to the northern part of the country, single snake has different names in different ethnic tribe groups. Each ethnic group has its own uh, identification characteristics and everything. You go to the northern part or to the juvenile uh, state in the northern part of the country, people will call all snakes by a single name. You know, uh -huh. um, they doesn't differentiate between species. Um, so yeah, this is part of it. Uh, that knowledge is not um, I mean, equal, different parts of the country. And I think that has to do with this. The other part is um, the movement. People are moving a lot from part, from place to place, uh, especially now, during this war. Yeah. Uh, people have displaced. Yeah. 
so maybe we have to inform some of the listeners so there's a, currently since when did it start like 15th april 15th 2023 last year, right? 20, what, 20, last year yeah but yeah that's, mm -hmm. but there's been conflict in the country up and like on and off or but now yeah. actual war the current crisis is since april 15 last year there were problems in the four region but not in the whole country and not uh, in the during the time. yeah mm. not the whole country mm. but now uh we are facing uh lots and lots and lots of displacement uh, even the iom has mentioned that this is the highest number of displaced people in record it's a historical Wait, record. iom is an international history. organization of migration right yes yes mm. yes has published the report saying that this is the high, this is a historical uh, number of displaced people. There have never been that amount of people being displaced. Mm -hmm. uh, half of the children of Sudan are facing famine now, wow. while we're talking. Uh, I've seen these sad videos uh, a couple of days ago of people who had died inside their houses. Mm -hmm. They have been sieged by the militia, the Rapid Support Forces, which is a militia. Mm. And uh, they teach people, forbidding them from going out, from uh, buying food or whatever. Mm. And at the same time, meeting them by uh, stopping uh, or, or blacking out the internet connection, as well as blacking out electricity, mm. as well as burning universities, burning schools, uh, destroying libraries and everything. So mm. people had actually died due to famine in mm. the capital Khartoum. Uh, going back to the relationship between what's happening right now in Sudan and numerous organisms uh, there like snakes and scorpions, I predict that we will see uh, a soaring number of envenomation if it, it got uh, registered or recorded. Mm. Because Paul had moved from the environments they know uh, and they know the organisms present in them and how to deal with them to other new uh, environments. Mm -hmm. And I have this Facebook group online mm -hmm. uh, in which we started as experts to uh, raise the awareness of the community. People are sending us lots of photos of extremely venomous organisms they are encountering for the first time ever mm. in locations they have never been to before. Yeah, of course. Hi. And we had, yeah, and we had even had this report of a guy who had been bitten by a cobra, huh. a black necked cobra, yeah, uh, Naja Negricolis. Yeah, and there was no antivenom due to this ongoing uh, war, and he died within three hours a painful death. Wow. Sorry. So this is happening. Children are dying due to scorpion stings. People are dying due to scorpion stings and snake bites. No internet connection currently in Sudan. Sudan has been muted for more than two weeks. We cannot reach people. We cannot receive even photos if they are encountering venomous uh, organisms or anything. Mm. So yeah, this is the situation on, on the ground. Wow. So sorry to hear that. Well, I knew about the situation, but it's, it's always shocking to hear firsthand, even on repeat. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so how does it, well, obviously, how does it affect your research? You basically described it already. So the university is stalled. Everything like is just yep. halted. And yes. yourself, you continue with keeping, like move. you moved your project basically to social media platforms as much as exactly. possible as you can engage with the community to inform them on how they can protect themselves. Exactly. And I helped in like uh, linking the people with the medical personnel, mm. expert ones. One of them is expert in snake bites. He's a toxinologist, clinical toxinologist based in Birmingham, UK. And the other is, uh, is specialized in scorpion stings treatment and management. Mm -hmm. He's now displaced in Cairo. 
So I keep this ring. I mean, we call, we talk to the victims. We tell the doctor on the ground what to do exactly, how to do it. And we managed to save several lives doing this. Wow. Yeah. 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 See, there's always one can do, even in the most desperate situation. So, wow, kudos for that work. And it must be so difficult because, of course, everybody's affected with the family, friends, and then still you find the energy. Or maybe that's also what keeps us going as humans in such situations. Find the energy to to make yourself useful and actually save lives. Yeah. Mm. And it actually saves my sanity. Yeah, to... I can imagine. Yeah, because oh yeah, I'm a displaced refugee currently. I had to leave everything I owe on. Um... So now you're in the um, Emirates, in the United Arabic Emirates? Yes. Now I, I live in the UAE. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I moved here after a very long journey from the capital through different states and states. And then to Saudi Arabia and then Saudi Arabia to AE. And a lot of people have been through long journeys like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm a survivor, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I I will have been involved in a little bit, and there's a movement called um Science for Ukraine. I mean, a movement as an initiative by researchers who help the uh, still today. So um, I I'll link the the website in the show notes. But I'm wondering. I think the infrastructure can also be used. So yeah, first of all, is there something that we as a community of scholars can do to support scholars like yourself and those who are still in the country? I first thing is uh, to let the people know what's going on. So let's talk about Sudan and about what happened to Sudan. Mm-hmm. Because we feel that the media has just blackened us. We have been betrayed by all, like by the militia who's killing and raping people and destroying the country and by the media who has just uh, didn't report anything about what atrocities we're facing, mm. not just as scientists, but as humans. So uh, we need the world to mm. see and to talk about us, about Sudan and Sudanese people. Mm. So we need to talk about these atrocities. We need to draw, to draw the attention to what's going on in Sudan. Mm. Uh, This is the first thing we need to do uh, to serve the community. The second thing I think is, yeah, a lot of scientists are still on the ground there. The majority has fled the country. And currently um, I'm working on this. um, Again, I'm doing everything online. It's uh, a questionnaire uh, and we're collecting data, a colleague and me. We're collecting data from academicians, uh, from administrators in higher education and scientific research, as well as from students mm-hmm. from Sudan about where they are about, uh, if the students had to like work to maintain and to continue I mean, just eating food, just putting a meal on the table yeah. and uh, about what's going on exactly. Mm. People had this is very this is a gesture like this questionnaire. Mm. People like um received us with celebrating that we had thought about them. We had just put this questionnaire online for them mm-hmm. to try and, and fill it. And those who can fill it are actually those who are outside the country because Sudan mm. is uh people are not online, you know, yeah. in the majority of the country. Yeah. Mm. So the third thing that we can do, like when Ukraine war has erupted, internet connection was applied to people on the ground. Maybe we can have this movement, like please them, uh, like Starlink or whatever type of internet connection be available for Sudanese people on the ground. The problem in Sudan is not just the war. It's about muscle. People use the internet to transfer money to their relatives back yeah. home. Yeah. And this is using uh, internet connection. So more people will die due mm. to famine. Mm. Not just being killing, killed by, by bullets, but famine is there. Mm. So maybe these are the three things I think people can do 
uh, for Sudan. Talk about Sudan. Help us by restoring internet. And if you can, ha- if we can have this call like uh, science for Ukraine, uh, if we can have something like scientists or academicians for mm-hmm. Sudan as well, movement yeah. that will be brilliant. Yeah, I know there's a similar movement in Turkey. There is also a science for this displaced and minority group. Um, who are politically evicted and and threatened? I'll I'll dig up these um, resources. We put them under the into the um, resource list to this episode, and we can also um, yeah continue talking and and brainstorming and um, collect ideas and support and listeners. If you if you have ideas and suggestions and want to learn more, you can please get in touch. Um, by email and through our um, contact forms and communication channels and then we will um, can forward information also to you Rania um, thank you appreciate um, it yeah so also you you recently just nearly joined the team of access to perspectives and um, with that also Africa archive so that we will um, now moving on work more closely together and with that, hopefully, yeah. we'll also find ways to support the people and the scholarly community in Sudan more. Well, yeah, additionally to the work and support the work that you already do. Thank you so much for for the work you do. Thank you very much, Joe, and thank you for uh, bringing me into the team. I love what you're doing. I love Africa Archive Initiative, and I love. The, the the context, the whole context and the perspective and the the idea that you wanted Africans to do um, things for themselves instead of giving them like a golden spoon, look, this is done for you. What that's what that's the behavior Africans are used to. That's a great initiative and I really respect it. Thank you. And like to be I, I love being one of the team and I hope that um, I will do good. I mean, I will do something good within well, the of team. Of course, you've already done a tremendous work, and um, and some of your work is archived in Africa Archive, so you're already part of it um, in that sense as well. And like the approach that we have with access to perspectives, like is a collaboration on a globally inclusive approach, and yeah. any scholarship that concerns the continent should be owned and under the agency of African scholars. So that's what we're working towards. And it's a it's a yeah. no-brainer, really. There's nothing, no questions to ask. History has taught us otherwise, but we're just cross-correcting. Cool. Hi, yeah. Thank you Thank for you that. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, and we will, like, um, you will hear more from us. So let's be in yeah. touch. Sure. And be safe. Okay. And all the best to your family and Thank friends. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joe. I really appreciate uh, today uh podcast with you and let's keep the good work yeah we will for sure thanks for joining us to listen to this episode do let us know what you think you can email us or connect with us on our social media channels which you can find on our website at access to perspectives.org email us at info at access to perspectives.org or book a call to explore how we can support you with your research planning management and publishing Welcome you again soon for our next episode. Until then, have a great time.